I'm Sienna. Oh no, I missed it. Okay, go ahead. Hey, I'm Sienna. And I'm Madison. And you are listening. <laughs> hey, I'm Sienna. And I'm Madison. <laughs> yeah, I'm so I'm so yelling at them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Hi, I'm Sienna. And I'm Madison. And you're listening to the Just a Person podcast. Hi everybody, welcome to Just a Person Podcast, a show that explores life's highs, lows, and in-betweens. I'm Madison, and today we're talking to Dana. Dana stops by to talk to us about what it's like working in the news industry, dealing with hateful comments, and the importance of being yourself. Thanks for listening and enjoy! Hello! Hi! Hello! Dana, welcome to our show! Thank you! I'm super excited to talk to you, actually. Like, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we get started, my mom is a huge fan of yours. <laughs> 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 but yeah, she watches you every day. She'll be like, Madison, I saw your friend Dana on the news today. This is what she's talking <laughs> about. She's like, a, she's a big fan of yours. Thanks, Ma. <laughs> so and I know that she'll listen to this so I she'll be excited <laughs> um okay so I'm gonna pick this question out of the hat and I'm gonna ask it and then Dana you're gonna answer first sound good sounds good Ooh. okay this one's this one might be a little tricky might require a little thought what is something everybody loves but you hate oh I have to think about this honestly I already know my answer so I can go first if you want Okay. Yeah, you go. Okay. I hate brunch. I think it's the dumbest meal. I don't have a problem with people that like brunch. I just don't get it because it's such- I love brunch. (laughs) It's just like like an odd time of day for me to be eating. And I like, I don't want, like, I just want like pancakes or like a lunch meal I don't want like casserole you know what I mean and maybe people have other brunches but that is my experience of brunch is just casserole at like 11 a.m and I just don't like it (laughs) I love brunch (laughs) I I have a really (laughs) strong opinion about it I don't like if everyone else loves brunch that's great I I do not want to be invited like for me, I don't eat my first meal of the day till like one. So for me, that's breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> like there is no brunch. Like I just have breakfast like midday. So I guess I don't understand brunch either. <laughs> Fair enough. I think I hate texting. I would rather talk on the phone. And I feel like a lot of people prefer texting, but I just think it takes too long and I'd rather just call someone. <laughs> I'm with you that I have that same opinion like let's just get this out of the way yep okay gosh those are both good I would also say I hate texting I don't hate it I'm just bad at it I just don't I hate I would say like spending a lot of time not spending a lot of time on my phone because I do but just like hmm, how do I phrase I don't know Madison do you know what I'm trying to say yeah, you just like you're just not a responder. Like you're not interested in talking to people that way. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I just don't like communicating on my phone with other yeah, people. That's fair. I really don't like it. So I'm kind of piggybacking off what Dana said, but also I'll say I don't like actual breakfast, like foods. And I hate eating in the morning. It makes me sick. Oh my goodness, who are you people? (laughs) Dana's like, I gotta get out of here. (laughs) This is a mistake. (laughs) (laughs) It's weird because I work so early. So I like eat mostly in the morning and then like I'll probably stop eating at like two. So it's like the opposite. Okay, see, um, yeah, I will probably start eating around two because like I I can't eat before noon. Like it'll, I'll get sick. So I probably start eating around two and then I at night I'm like a huge night eater so I'll just it's like I eat all my food mainly at like 10 p.m 11 p.m like pre-bed <laughs> yeah you guys honestly are like on the exact opposite schedule like Dana's working she's up at like what time do you get up like two or three yeah like 3 a.m oh my yeah that's like I'm still awake not even gone to bed yet uh yeah that's that's really funny um okay so Dana Today, we're here to talk to you about 
I don't know, just you work in the news industry. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about that. But before that, uh, do you want to tell us about kind of where you're from, what your childhood was like? So I grew up in Metro Detroit. I went to Central Michigan University for college and majored in broadcasting and journalism. And then I went to Lansing for my first job at WLNS Channel 6 and worked there for just under two years. And then now I'm in Grand Rapids at Wood TV. When we were in college, you were, I think, two years ahead of me. And you were in college and you were reporting, like you were working as a reporter before you graduated. Oh, yeah. So I started in Lansing in March and worked weekends. And then I ended up graduating May of that year, May of 2018. So I would commute down on, I worked Thursday to Sundays and I like planned my schedule to be able to do that. Cause I kind of wanted to start working before I graduated. So I would come down Thursdays in the afternoon and then Friday to Sunday all day, which that's cool. I'm glad I got to do that before I graduated. Yeah. That was crazy though. Everyone was like, like, who is this yeah. girl? Like, this is the, like, <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> I don't know. You're just like very determined, like very hardworking person. Goals, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, when did you know that you wanted to work in journalism? I always knew since I was a little girl, because I would watch Local 4 in Detroit. That was like the station my family grew up watching. And Carmen Harlan was their main anchor. She was a black woman. And I really look up to her because I feel like she was one of the only few black women that were on Detroit news at the time that had such a dominant role so I kind of wanted to go into it for that reason. Since you've been graduated um, you've been really a big advocate for women particularly women of color being able to wear their hair naturally on camera which I find interesting because I didn't even know that that was, you know, a thing. I didn't know that. I guess like I have the privilege of not knowing that, that like that doesn't affect me. And I think the way that you go about it is really cool. And though like I I read, well, okay, if we want to brag about you a little bit, you had um, your articles in Teen Vogue and on the Today Show. So I mean, that was wild. <laughs> Yeah. Why don't you actually talk about that for a minute? Yeah. So when I decided to go natural, I was only like three months in in Lansing. And I was like, before it was just college news where I could like do it a couple times a week, but this was every day. So I was straightening my hair every day and then I was straightening it or touching it up before like each show. So it was multiple times a day and it literally started like falling out and burning off. So I'm like, all right, well, if I want to actually do this job like I'm gonna be bald in a year so I can't do this so um, I went to NABJ the National Association of Black Journalists conference in Detroit that year and met a girl and she really like motivated me to go natural and like kind of talked to me about how to do it as far as like speaking to management and just kind of having the confidence so I did it on a weekend when our bosses weren't there because I was like, well, let me just test the waters and see how this goes. And no one said anything like, and my producer, she works at Wood TV with me, but I produced her at the time there. So her and I are really good friends and she would never do anything like that. The anchor was super cool. And I think that they were the right people to do that with because they both too were like, I didn't even know you felt like this. Like your hair looks great. And I'm like, yeah, well, thank you. Okay, then that's great. So <laughs> that was on a Saturday and then I tweeted about it and Teen Vogue the reporter messaged me on Twitter on that Sunday and posted the article by Monday and then Today Show and Yahoo and Insider they all messaged me too like hey can you answer our questions we all want to put this on our stuff so then by that time management can't really say anything because it's going viral for good reasons. So I kind of like lucked out in a way because I know it's not like that for a, a lot of women will like ask their management for permission if they can change their hair and they'll tell them no, or they just won't even do it because they're scared. But I think the going viral thing kind of helped my case because it was positive for the station. How do you think your managers would have reacted if you would have asked them? I don't know at the time because I was honestly scared like I didn't want to give them an opportunity to say no so that's why I didn't mm -hmm. even ask like my boss 
hired another girl, a darker skin black girl with a fro right after all that viral stuff happened. So I think that he kind of realized, okay, people like this, this is a good thing and made it more intentional to start hiring like people of color and women of color with natural hair, which was cool. I find it even odd that like you have to ask permission or how you said other people like that that's even something you have to ask your manager. I know. Like so in our contracts, it doesn't like say that they can tell me how to look, but it kind of says like they basically own my face. So if they want to do something or like want me to do something, they can't force me, but I mean it's might be in your best interest to do what your boss wants, but I kind of just decided that I didn't want to do that. And I know um, this reporter, she called me when I first went viral. She works in Charleston, South Carolina now as an anchor. And she said when she first went natural, she literally printed out pictures of black women with natural hair and took it to her news director's desk and like sat them out at his desk and was like, women are doing this. Like, this is a thing, it's happening and I'm going to start doing it too. And she said if she felt like she didn't do that, he probably would have been, like, pushed back a little bit. I think that's crazy. Like, they would have just preferred your hair fall out. Like, they would prefer you to be bald. I know. I have friends, too, that'll just wear wigs because, I mean, natural hair, it's, like, work. It's a lot of work to, like, maintain my natural hair. So I know girls that just wear wigs because they don't want to straighten their real hair and damage it. Yeah. I guess before you decided to go natural, I was just going to ask, like, Did you feel like a lot of pressure to straighten your hair every day and have perfect hair? Like, where do you think that pressure is kind of like coming from? I think it's just like when you, like when I was growing up and watching the news, I didn't see anyone with natural hair at all. Like everyone had that reporter bob or just like short, straight hair and you just didn't see it. So then when I went to college, I just thought that's what it was. And then I had a friend at CMU where a guy told her, that she wouldn't be able to get a job if she kept her hair the way it was. And she had like a curly fro and she, we were talking about it. So I was like, oh, okay, well crap. Then I best I, or I guess I better just stick with my hair like this, but that sucks because it discourages people from going into news and having like diverse newsrooms because you like shouldn't have to sacrifice yourself for a job. Mm-hmm. And I feel like kind of how you were saying almost in a way, having natural hair, some people would associate that with being unprofessional and they associate the straight, clean hair with being more professional when really it's your hair. Like that has nothing to do with the way you carry yourself, the way you hold yourself, like what type of news anchor or any job that you really are. But it's like crazy, that association. Right. And my curly hair smells good. (laughs) (laughs) I have all the like conditioners and whatnot so yeah (laughs) I love it and I feel like most people generally just don't have like really straight hair like that you know like trying to make everyone look the exact same like what's the point of that and that's why I think like the going viral thing like spoke on that because people are like well we haven't seen this like this is cool and that's crazy like it was 2018 when that happened and people are still shocked to see like reporters wearing their natural hair. See, that is just like literally it's 2018 and there's still in some ways discrimination based off your hair. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is insane. Especially I get what you're saying for a job in the news where your face kind of not that it matters, but like kind of, you know, like usually news people like look a certain way. So to like step out when you're like expected to look like kind of like picture perfect I feel like puts more pressure especially because you're new like you were new when you did that it helps because like all the people I like have worked with for the most part have supported me and I think that's definitely helped because the producer who I mentioned earlier who was in Lansing with me at the same time she's in Grand Rapids with me now she's also my current boss so I kind of like knew who I was going to be working for when I came here and I kind of hinted to the news director that like wearing my hair natural is important to me during my interview because like I was worried too and like I go to a bigger market you're like are they going to make me like change the way I look but I kind of like said off the bat like this is something I'm passionate about and like I'm really not willing to change or like straighten my hair all the time for a job 
So I, I thought that was a good way to go about it because I kind of let him know. And he's cool. Like everyone at Wood has been super supportive. And I think they're excited, honestly, to have someone who looks a little different. When you can like take off the pressure of you trying to make yourself look a certain way, then you can like actually just give more to your job. Like you're not worrying about what you look like. You're just worried about doing your job right. Oh, yeah. It's so much better because in the summer when I would try to keep my hair straight, that's just not going to work. And it's humid (laughs) and like the top would start to like frizz up and it just looked bad. So then I'm worried about how I look while I'm trying to do my job. But now I just put it in a bun when it's too hot. So it's great. Like if you were to apply to a job and like you kind of let them know that you like want to wear her natural. I feel like if they were against that, like I feel like a lot of people might not even want to work there anyways. But also at the same time, it's kind of not fair that like somebody would have to miss out on like a possible good job opportunity just because they just want to be themselves, you know? Yeah, that's what I try to tell like women who like want to transition natural like they're like well what if like I don't get a job or what if no one wants to hire me I'm like well why would you want to work for that person anyway if they're gonna prioritize that over your demo reel and what you can actually do like on air yeah I mean the way you look has nothing to do with the way that you do your job really period I mean so you were saying that uh in your contract they kind of can control roll a little bit kind of how you look what are are there other things besides your hair that they can like tell you to change they can't necessarily tell us they can like suggest so like makeup um I guess there's just like a standard as far as like you can't go on air looking like you just rolled out of bed and I think it's getting more lenient though because it honestly depends on the station because I feel like some stations take that more seriously but at Wood, I feel like everyone just does their own and looks how they want to. And it, it's been fine. Mm-hmm. See, that's another thing. Like, okay, makeup that for a lot of professional jobs, you're expected to like, as a woman, have your makeup done like every day. And it's like, you, like I feel like women are held to like a higher standard to like look a certain way than men are. Oh yeah, that's definitely hard too. Because I did not know how to do my makeup before this job. And my college roommate, Kennedy, is my sorority sister, bless her heart, because she literally, like, taught me. And they don't teach you in, like, first markets. You're barely getting paid a lot. Like, you're barely getting paid to begin with. So they don't pay for the makeup. You have to buy it. You have to know how to do it yourself. There's, like, a people think that reporters get, like, makeup artists or someone does it for us. And, nope, like, you have to learn. And now it's nice that would they give us some, they pay for our makeup here which is nice because at the first jobs when you don't get paid a lot, you're kind of trying to just make it yourself. That's a really big common misconception about reporters is that like once you're on the news, they like pay for your wardrobe and your hair and your makeup. Like, no, that's not at all. Reporters make like barely any money when they start out. People do not get that. Oh yeah, no, like half of my clothes are hand-me-downs. Like our anchors know that because they also had to go through it. So um, Emily Leonard, she's one of the anchors at the station. She brought like 20 of her old dresses in the dressing room just for like us young reporters to like grab or pick out. So I was like, well, I'm taking like eight. This is a week's worth of clothes, dude. (laughs) (laughs) So that's nice that there's like those people who help out. And also your local Goodwill. I like when I first started, I would go to like Salvation Army and Goodwill to get dress clothes because it's expensive. Huge fan of Goodwill here. Oh yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love Goodwill. <laughs> yeah. And then like, I'm sure you get people, well, I know you get people that like, that are just people that watch or whatever that comment on how you look. And like, that's just so crazy. Like, leave it be. They're just you know, like you're just reporting the news. Like, what do they think is going to happen? I don't know. Like the the amount that people think that they can comment on people's appearance, especially women in news. It's like, wh- like, what is going on here? Oh, yeah. There's the haters. Have you ever gotten comments about yourself or anything? Uh-huh. People are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so we have like a station email where it goes to everyone. Like it's like Wood Newsroom. And people will write in, not just about me, just about, like, all of us, all the honor talent. And I think you just kind of have to get that thick skin and develop it and realize that that doesn't change how you do your job. 
And when it's like really out of line, my coworkers are dope because I usually won't respond because I don't have the time for that. Like I'm not going to engage in a fight with someone. I don't even know about how I look because that's not what I'm getting paid to do. But I have had like multiple coworkers who will respond for me, like kind of setting them straight, which is nice. Yeah, they have your back. I'm sure you for like, you know, people are crazy and you probably, you know, don't respond to most, but I did see one the other day, if I can bring it up. Oh yeah, girl. <laughs> you posted about, uh, it was like, I maybe like the anniversary of when you started wearing your hair naturally on air or something like that. And then someone said, I prefer your hair the other way, but this guy's profile picture was a duck and you responded and you said, sorry, I don't take criticism from a duck. <laughs> <It's just laughs> so funny. It was so funny. That was a proud moment. <laughs> usually I won't respond because I'm like, I'm trying to like keep it professional. But I was like, I feel like I can make a joke out of this one. So he set, the, he set himself up. But it's like the, the fact that people have the audacity to comment on other people's appearances. Like, I just don't understand it. And they would, they don't talk about like why we're on air, like, it's crazy because a lot of our comments are just like how we look, but not about what we're talking about. I'm like, did you even listen to like the story at all or what I was saying? Exactly. Like if, if they were commenting about the content, that's like, it makes more sense. Like, oh, right. they disagree with what they're saying like, okay, fine. But just to say, oh, I prefer your hair straight. I'm sorry, sir. Did I ask you? Like, do you think I care how you prefer my hair to look? Like, thank you, duck man. Like. He responded back to that and said, like, oh, she's being sassy. I was just, like, giving my opinion or something. I'm like, uh-uh, no, you're just mad because people are calling you out now. <laughs> oh, it's like, yeah, you were just giving your opinion. That's problem number one. Like, I didn't ask for it. Like, don't do it again. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, b- besides that, besides you know, people judging you on the way that you look. Um, what are kind of some of the other harder things about being a reporter? I would say that first job, like it is hard. And I feel like the first like six months out of college as a reporter, no one really knows what they're doing. You just kind of go through the motions and just like maintaining that confidence. And then a lot of the times you're not going to have a photographer in the first job. So you're shooting all your stuff too and editing it. So as far as like time management, and just making sure your stuff gets on air. That was definitely a challenge in the beginning. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of curious. What are your work hours? Like if you, you said you're waking up at 2 a.m. So my I'm on our daybreak show, which is from 4.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. It's like when people wake up and get ready for work. So it's like the Today Show, but before it and like local. So I get in at 3.30 and I do my stuff for the morning the day before. So like I'll come in, my stuff's usually written and done. And if I'm like live somewhere, then we'll go there and set up for 430. Or if there's breaking news, they'll send me to that, which happens somewhat frequently. And then after the show ends at seven, we have a meeting where we kind of talk about what we want to do for the rest of the week or the next day. And then from like that time until like 11 o'clock noon, I'll be working on my story for the following day, which I like the flow because you go into work like knowing what your day is going to look like so I'll like pre-plan my week so I kind of like know how it's going to flush out because if you wait at 7 a.m and you're trying to set something up like people aren't awake yet they're going to be awake by like 9 10 and at that point you're ready to go home because you done been at work since three in the morning do you like working that early like is that like the preferred slot I guess like as you get further into your career can you pick kind of later times in the day do they kind of put the beginners in the morning or how like it kind of depends on the station so like the main people who have been there a long time are day side which is like 9 30 to 6 30 so they're on air for like the five and six o'clock show and sometimes the noon okay so they'll put the newer people on my shift and then night side which is like 3 p.m to midnight but I prefer mornings over night side because I feel like with night side you lose your whole day and then you don't fall asleep until like 2 3 a.m and then you wake up at noon or one and then it's like time to get ready for work yeah so I really like morning because I get off at 11 o'clock and I'm done for the day no that is really nice what time how early do you have to go to bed kind of random but (laughs) (laughs) so I like split my sleep I 
like some reporters do it differently and they'll go to bed at like 6 p.m but I can't do that because that's when all my friends finish work because they're on normal schedules and I feel like I would never just see anyone and I I'm a very social person so I'll usually get off and then nap for like three hours so like before this I napped from like noon to like three and then I'll be up and like work out or hang out with people and then go back to bed at like nine or ten do you find that works well for you yeah I think that's my best bet that's commitment I'm impressed there are the days where I don't fall asleep until midnight and it's rough but you get through because we're I feel like everyone on that shift is exhausted so we kind of just like make sure everyone stays awake (laughs) you're in it together (laughs) so before we're before we wrap it up here I think if we didn't talk about the whole like fake news um situation be and be missed so what is what is your opinion on that like what what is that like from the other side when everyone thinks everything in the world is fake news it's dumb (laughs) 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 so I feel like those people like look at us and don't think we're human or that we're people or like just their neighbors who live down the street and live in the same, they just, I don't know what they think we are, that we are just on TV and then disappear because there's nothing we would genuinely gain from lying on TV. Like we're here to tell the community stories and we still get a lot of emails like saying that we're lying or that this is fake. I love Wood TV though, because we'll respond back. Like literally everything, every position in the newsroom like we'll reply all saying like I got this one and then someone will like respond because it's dumb like a lot of people will write it in saying like why aren't you covering this like you're the liberal media yada yada and it'll be on our website so we'll just respond a link to the story so <laughs> here you go <laughs> that's an amazing response <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's great. (laughs) People do that all the time. Like they're making accusations when they never even checked in the first place about what is really going on. Oh, yeah. Like a lot of people will read a headline and then go crazy. And I'm like, did you even read the the article to figure out what you're even talking about? I notice on Twitter now it won't let you retweet an article. It won't let you retweet an article. Well, it'll say like if you're about to retweet it and haven't read it, like, would you rather read this first before sharing it? which is nice. I feel like they're helping us out here. That's a, that's a really good feature, honestly. No, that, like, who's going to read, I, that blows my mind that people are out here retweeting articles that they haven't even read. I know, that's bad. You're sharing information that you haven't even looked at yourself. And having an opinion about it. Yes, yes, people have, like, full-on formed opinions that they'll argue about, When they haven't even read the article. Yeah. They just read the headline. That's so many people do. I see it all the time. People read a headline and then they form all these opinions. I'm like, I'm sorry, you couldn't take the five extra minutes to read the article. Like, uh, and if you don't want to read the article, fine. But then don't have an opinion. Right. You can't have an opinion if you didn't read the article. Oh, it drives me crazy. (laughs) Mad. It's literally mad. Santa needs to take a deep breath. (laughs) She needs to take a little <laughs> break for a minute. Short break. <laughs> I see that. Okay, I see on Twitter all the time. I'm like, come on, do better. Like, that's probably why Twitter added that because they're like, we're sick of this. <laughs> yes, we like we need to do better as a society. <laughs> like, truly. Yeah, I think it's funny because it's not like you guys are like the national news. You know, like it's not like you're influencing like millions of people. Like, why Why would you lie about anything? We get emails, too, like, yelling at us for not covering something in, like, California. Like, those, we also get that. And, <laughs> like, literally watch Lester Holt. Like, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, ma'am. This is the local news. <laughs> like, look up a California, new, like, local news and <laughs> read their articles about it. <laughs> You're not on the right station for California news. <laughs> Right. <laughs> this is not NBC, but thank you for thinking we're that good. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> so we like to finish up the show by asking people for advice. So what is your advice for people that want to kind of like be more themselves or just be like who they are, but but it's like 
you know, maybe a little scary, not very popular. I would say just be true to yourself. And I feel like no one knows you better than you know yourself. So if people are telling you, because when I first started to try to go natural, there's like people who are like, well, are you sure? Like, and I know it's like them trying to protect me, but at the end of the day, like, you know what you want out of life. So just go for it. And I feel like the real people in your life will support you. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. Nobody knows you better than yourself. My dad told me that. I was like, thanks, did he? <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, well, thank you for taking some time and being on the other side of an interview today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Was it kind of weird? Oh, yeah. I always feel like I just like spew like. Yeah, I'm sure it's we because we each did our own episode until like and we haven't been, you know, this is not our career. So like being on the other side of it, even for just the short amount of time, like that was it's just like weird, you know? Yeah, it was hard for me. Yeah, it is. Because I'm always like, I'm like, why do you care? Like, I want to ask you questions. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Do a little switch up. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Thank you uh, for being on here. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Awesome. Thanks so much again to Dana for being the guest on our show today. If you have a story you want to personally share on the show or want us to read on air, find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Just a Person Pod, or send us an email at justapersonpod at gmail.com. And we'll see you next Monday with another new episode.